have our next guest, Rodney, here, live in studio. Here he is, Rodney. Let's have it for Rodney. All right, Rodney. All right. We love it. All right. Rodney is a businessman. Isn't that right? What is your profession? I work in commercial real estate financing. I work for a nonprofit, and we invest government bonds in commercial real estate. Right. You've been doing that for how long? Uh, 20 years. 20 years. All right. Fantastic. So you, again, you had the penile surgical technique done with Dr. Chow, but he was not a patient of Dr. Chow's. So what was the first day? You looked in the, you, I don't know, you looked in the mirror or what? How did, what was the first day that you said, hey, I have gum recession. I have a problem. Well, it was really a delayed uh, uh, response because I knew I had issues, um, but I knew it couldn't continue. I couldn't let it just continue to erode. Um, I did a lot of research online and it was about a month, maybe a month and a half of research and I came across Dr. Chow's technique. Mm -hmm. And that's how I decided I wanted to see the master. The master, okay. The, the gentleman who created this uh, wonderful technique. So you went into, your, uh, into Dr. Chow and uh, you asked him, what did he tell you on that day? Do you remember that day? Uh, I, I do, but um, I can't exactly remember what he said, mm -hmm. but I know that I, he said I had a severe case of gum recession. Right. And, and so then you elected to do the procedure. And uh, what, uh, tell, what, how many teeth did he treat? I believe we did almost all of them. So yeah. I did the upper and the lower, mm -hmm. all yeah. at the same time, just like Mary. So upper and lower arch, Dr. Chow? Is that yeah, right? I think, I remember, actually, he also had uh, 22 teeth done. Wow. So full mouth, again, uh, similar to Mary. And uh, so you had the procedure done. And what was your, uh, what was your level of discomfort uh, after the procedure the next day? How did you find it? Uh, it wasn't too bad. Um, it was dis there was some discomfort only because I had both uh, upper and lower done, but I followed the instructions of Dr. Chow and his staff, and they gave me some Tylenol and Ad I believe Advil, and I was fine. The only thing is uh, I tend to sleep moving around a lot, but right. Dr. Chow said I can't. I had to be still. So <laughs> I had to get some pillows and prop them yeah. up, and it was okay. All right, yeah. fantastic. So you didn't take any narcotics, right? Absolutely not. Yeah, so, yeah. so we, we don't have a problem with, with pain yeah. at all. Yeah, so just over-the-counter pain pills, uh, maybe one or two for most patients. Um, also, uh, ice. Ice is fantastic. So that's what makes Pinol so easy because patients are able to eat normal foods the next day, go back to work the next day. So wh how, what was your experience? What did you, I think you said that you actually had to speak the next day. I, I believe I had an appointment. Uh, I meet a lot of uh, people face-to-face, -face, so I didn't have any issues. Um, Talking was a little difficult, but uh, I was able to get through it, right. only because of the swelling. Right. Uh, but it was fine. So you used uh, some so ice and so forth. So what type of foods were you able to eat the next day and uh, the second day? Again, I think I in my case, just like Mary, we had the upper and lower at the same time. So it was a lot of soft foods, a lot of soup for the, probably the first three or four days, and didn't really get into uh, solids like chicken mm. until maybe day four or five. Yeah, if I can interject. Actually, if you didn't see Ronnie the, the day before, you saw Ronnie the second day, he doesn't look strange at all. No. Know, because both sides were the same. A little, right. little bit swollen, uh, but, uh, but uh, so swelling wasn't bad, was it? Not at all. Yeah. No, it wasn't that bad. Uh, again, the ice was key. Yeah, ice was key. Uh -huh. And uh, you were able to hide some of the swelling because you have a nice, uh, nice beard and mustache. <laughs> that is correct. Or I could have just said I got in a fight. <laughs> right. So let's bring up Rodney's case. Here's what it looked like. Uh, so you can see he had definitely some uh, significant uh, recession. Isn't that right, Dr. Chow? Yes. Not only is it long, but uh, it's also pretty deep. And um, Rodney really made the right decision to come in because if, get, if they get any deeper, he'll be looking at doing root canals on those teeth and uh, take a chance of losing them. So uh, he allowed us to intervene uh, just about uh, at the right time and not, not too late. Now, 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 am I right? You were not really vigilant in seeing your dentist before Dr. Chow, is that right? That, that is correct. I, I figured if I didn't have any cavities and the teeth weren't falling out, it was fine. But um, yeah, there was a, probably a combination of, of things why I neglected my teeth. But. Um, yeah, I'm, glad I, I'm glad I went when I went because, as Dr. Chow just stated, uh, I, was, I could have been in jeopardy of losing teeth, which I did not want to have happen. But he, he gave me a lot of comfort saying that if we do this, we should be fine. Yeah, and you look at the upper left uh, eye tooth, the canine, 
You see how deep that is. That is a major concern to us. And the, and the two teeth underneath, uh, be behind that one. So, but it all turned out just fine. Upper and lower teeth, and we're all done at the same time. And the Rani was just a great patient. And the results are just phenomenal. And we grew some really nice tissue around those teeth. Where the tissue, where the gum is kind of thin. And uh, let's see, look at the upper left canine. They got really thick, and that protects uh, the teeth from losing more gum. And, uh, and so that is a major service that we're able to help uh, Rodney with. So Rodney, did you ever think about having traditional gum grafting? Well, uh, that was one of the options. I believe when I did my initial research online, that was one of the first options that came up was the traditional graft. I had known a few people that actually had that, but they didn't recommend it at all. So uh, I was able to um, come across Dr. Chow's pinhole technique, and, and I'm glad I made the call. Fantastic. And you're very active, too, right? Correct. You do a lot of stuff. You, uh, what are some of the things that you're active in, your hobbies? Uh, I like to golf. I like to fish. I hike. Uh, I stay out in the outdoors. Yeah. So. And you like to eat food, right? So like you, need your, you need your choppers. Correct. <laughs> okay, Absolutely. Keep the choppers. Yes. All right. Very good. Very good. So uh, after going, moving forward, uh, were, were you happy with the results? 100% uh, pleased yeah. with the results. Mm -hmm. And would you recommend it to other patients? I would if they have concerns of losing their teeth and just, you know, the issues of brushing and have that, having that sensitivity. I would definitely recommend Dr. Chow uh, to do the procedure. Again, I, I wanted to to go with the master, the guy, the gentleman who created this technique, and, and it was great. Well, thank you. It's good to have you. It'd be very good. If you are in other areas in the United States, Canada, and all around the world, and you're certainly welcome to ask your dentist. Ask your dentist about pinhole. He or she will refer you to somebody uh, to, to get this procedure done if, you're if your own dentist doesn't do pinhole already. Yes, fantastic. So, uh, that is wonderful. Uh, Rodney, let's have a big round of applause for Rodney, All right. our great patient. Thank you. All right. So, if you have questions for Rodney, he's going to be around. We're going to have our patients back here in a little bit. Uh, all three of them actually have one more, too. Uh, fantastic. We have Paul coming up. So, but we also have Dr. Deanna Snitzer. Uh, our, uh, she's a phenomenal, she's a general practitioner uh, in Denver, Colorado area. And so we're going to Skype her in. We're going to get her live here momentarily. So, but while we do, we're going to take a few questions and also uh, show you another video or two. So meanwhile, Dr. Xiao, we do have a question here uh, from Kim. Uh, with pinhole, do you get attachment onto the previous exposed root surface? OK. Uh, well, Kim, this is a great question. Uh, the question is, if you have a long recession, and then uh, now the gums have come down to its normal level. And uh, is there a true attachment? In other words, is there a gap between the newly grown regenerated gum and, uh, and, and the root? Well, there is no space. And uh, there is true attachment of the tissue to the root. If you try to put a probe or something everything between, you can't. And, um, and if you try to, let's say, take an impression where you had to pack the tissue away from your prep, uh, you will find that you can't do that. It's very, very tight. And I know that's a technical question. That's, uh, you sound like a dentist, Kim. And, um, and, but that's a great question. We don't have what's called pseudo pockets. And there's true attachment of the gum to the root. And this is, well, this is why it works so well, because it's attached and it won't tend to recede if you get a good result to begin with. We make it thicker and stronger and make a touch better. So that's the aim, uh, primary aim of uh, doing uh, pinhole surgical technique mm -hmm. or called pinhole gum rejuvenation. We get a very good result. So let's queue up Paul's uh, photos here again. And we have a question actually regarding Paul's case, Dr. Chow. Was number 11 restored with any composite? This is from Gabriella. Yes, yes, Gabriella, thank you for a great question. And uh, so uh, let me explain that a little bit. Can we have the picture back? So if you look at the upper left uh, eye tooth, and you see how far up uh, the recession is, you also see that there's a cleft there. There's a, there's a rough edge uh, at yeah. that uh, 
upper left eye tooth. There'll be th the third one down, third one to the left of the patient mm -hmm. from the front tooth. So now, that is because Rodney had lost enamel, and nor uh, lost normal tooth structure. Now the gums are not going to chase that little line there because that's artificially made. So the gums will want to go to where it's normal for that tooth. With this will mean that after I finished and the gum line has healed to its ideal level and that's permanent, then I did go back and fill in the little gap between the gum line and the, and the artificial cleft that you see. So mm. the question, Gabriela, is that uh, there was placed there a filling to fill in the artificially created uh, gap caused from erosion of the enamel. Very good. And uh, that was Rodney's case good. there. Great so question. That's fantastic. So uh, another question, Dr. Chow. And they're coming in. So give us your questions. We're going to answer them all. Uh, you have the inventor and a special guest here. This is from Dan. Is the periosteum lifted during the procedure or just the tissue above the tissue above the periosteum? Well, that's a tongue twister. Okay. <laughs> for, for, for the public, this is a te technical question. You either you can, you can raise the entire uh, tissue. The tissue is about that thick. You either you, you cut into it and raise part of it away from the underlying structure, or you go under the entire flap and basically fillet the tissue uh, from the un underlying structure. So, in, and, uh, and when we talk about periosteum, periosteum is a layer on the soft tissue. So we do remove the entire uh, flap of tissue uh, away from its underlying bone attachment, which means that we do remove the periosteum from the, uh, from the, the little layer that, that uh, attaches the bone to the tissue. So we remove the entire area so the periosteum is removed. This way we don't cut into the tissue which is causes bleeding. If you cut into the tissue, it causes actually pain. So we can avoid, avoid all that, uh, all that um, bleeding and possible pain from by getting underneath the entire tissue altogether. I know that's a long-winded explanation, but yes, we do remove the periosteum. We get the whole tissue to come down on the upper, on the upper teeth, and this explains why we have so little bit of bleeding, so little swelling, and so little pain. We don't, have, we don't have a problem with pain or with bleeding. And so, so this is a great question. We do remove the entire tissue thickness away from the underlying structure. Yes. So the question to your, uh, to your uh, answer to your question is yes. Fantastic. So we are going to uh, queue up Dr. Sensor, but I have another question for you, Dr. Chow, okay. while we're here. Here's uh, Dr. Salim Aptekin. Actually, he said, I just did another case today and the afternoon. Thank you, Dr. Chow. So okay, Celine, you, you took the course. You did another case. Congratulations. And I'm sure your, your patient must be very happy. You must be very excited to be able to provide such a wonderful service for your patients. We have 3,000 of the dentists in all around the world doing what Celine does. So please continue to do that. And those of you yes. who are... Uh, who don't know which dentist to go to in your area, uh, be sure to ask your dentist, and uh, I'm sure your dentist will be able to d direct you to a colleague who can uh, perform the service for you. So don't be afraid to ask. You'll yeah. be able to find somebody really good to help you. Now, Dr. Chow, the other question is, while we're getting Dr. Snitzer on the line here, uh, is um, how much collagen do you normally use for a typical upper arch? For, for, for upper arch, you would generally use uh, maybe two uh, 40 by 50 uh, membrane. We cut it into little small pieces. So probably about two, uh, much less if the recession like Ronnie's, like Ronnie's, that's at least two, because recessions were so long and so deep this way. Uh, but uh, if, it's a, if it's something that's three or four millimeters, then probably less than two. But if it's something like Ronnie's, probably about two. So we do use a fair amount of collagen to, uh, rather than using sutures, uh, to uh, hold the, to hold the uh, tissue uh, to where it needs to be. Thank you for asking that wonderful question. Very thoughtful. Okay. 
forget it. Okay, so we are going to bring up our other guest, Paul. And meanwhile, though, I want to show you uh, another video that we have here queued.